Oh, hey, didn't know you guys snuck in like that. Welcome back to DIY Bry. I'm your host, Brian, and today on the channel, we're going to build a Jurassic Park miniature diorama. I came across these little domes here at the Dollar Tree and I thought this would be really cool to build a miniature diorama in. Um, kind of brainstorming different ideas with the new Jurassic Park movie coming out. I thought that would be cool to build a little Jurassic Park diorama inside of this. Um, I found these on Amazon. So they're called Nano Hollywood Rides by Jada. They're die cast little collectibles. Uh, this one has the 1992 Ford Explorer in it which I thought was kind of cool. Um, also the Jeep Wrangler and the helicopter. Uh, so between this and this, I was thinking, now that, that would be kind of cool. I could do the T-Rex scene where the, the Ford Explorer is on its roof. Um, or maybe just something more simplistic like the, the, the gates going into Jurassic Park. And uh, started looking online for some 3D files. And I actually came across this guy here. Um, now, of course, I scaled it down and 3D printed it. You could make this out of... Uh, you know, styrofoam, you know, balsa wood, different materials if you wanted to. I thought the letters might be a little bit difficult to uh, to make those. Um, but there again, there's there's always ways to do stuff like that. So between this, the, the miniature car, my dome, a little bit of uh, styrofoam, imagination, I think it'd be pretty cool. Let's get started. Now on this little guy here, I want to try to put torches here that light up. Um, the only way that I could think to do it is they have these at the Dollar Tree as well. They're tea light candles, but they flicker, which I thought would look more like a torch than just a standard bright LED. Um, they're also kind of dim. The problem is that I think that even after removing them out of the housing and the clear flame cover off the top, the bulbs might be too big um, and also how do I put them here without being visible so I was thinking if I hollow out the base maybe all the way up throughout it um, and then I can drill holes to where these torches would be maybe use a little bit of super glue as the flame and then that way you would see the tea light candle coming through the clearness of the super glue. Now, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but it's worth a shot. Um, I did 3D print two of these, so if I mess one up, uh, got another one. If I don't mess it up, got another one. So, let's give it a shot. Okay, I got one more addition. I picked up this little uh, LED book light at the Dollar Tree as well, $1.25. Um, it actually is coming in pretty handy. I think the base of it will pop out. It holds uh, AA batteries, which will stay on a little longer. It has a, a on-off switch and all the wiring you need that you can use for the LED uh, tea light candles. So I think that overall, this thing is gonna be a great little addition to, to what we're already doing. And I think it'll fit all directly inside the base with very little modification. In Jurassic Park, dinosaurs are on the loose, but at McDonald's you'll find them. Six Jurassic Park collector cups. Get one free when you buy a large drink or dino-sized extra value meal. But catch them quick before they're extinct. All right, so I've gone ahead and drilled out all the holes where the torches are going to be on the top and along the front. I also hollowed out the bottom so the tea light candle can go inside there. Um, I don't know if those LED tea light candles are going to be very bright. But I'm hoping that they at least give it a little bit of a flicker look, but we'll see. Okay, now that I've drilled out all the holes for the lights, 
uh, top and bottom um, all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this and preparing it for paint uh, just because I feel, feel like that once it's mounted on the base it's going to be a little bit easier to paint it if it's already been pre-prepared. So. Okay, so I drilled a couple holes. Uh, these aren't the prettiest holes. Um, they were actually right in line, but then I wanted to widen them a little bit so I had a little bit more room to play with where the wires would come up through and making sure that they line up on the bottom of the of the gate holes that I made. Um, it doesn't really matter because the styrofoam is gonna cover the top of this and the battery pack will cover the bottom of it. So these aren't really even visible. It's just more of a reference. So when you glue down the styrofoam on top of this, then you can poke them from the bottom side and know exactly where to line them up at. So that being said, I put a little bit of just PVA glue on the bottom of this. Um, I would not use anything like a super glue on this styrofoam. It will eat it, I believe. Same thing with like a spray paint. Um, when you go to paint this, you're going to need to coat it something like a glue uh, or a Mod Podge prior to painting it. Um, if you're using any type of... Uh, spray can or anything like that okay so I just finished uh, gluing the the gates down to the base got a little bit of hot glue here not too concerned about it I'm gonna put down uh, the foundation here and and hide a little bit of these holes and a little bit of this uh, you know burn marks and glue marks and stuff like that um, I, I install all the electrical wires and the LEDs. Um, I was only able to fit two of the tea light candles inside of here. Um, I'm going to put those torches in front and hoping that the light will shine through them somewhat. Um, I don't need it to be super bright, just a little bit, just kind of give the, uh, the effect. But overall, it, it's it's looking a little rough right now, but I think it's going to come out pretty pretty damn cool when it's all finished. Let's keep going. Okay, so I have some zip ties here. I cut the ends off of them. Um, I have two of them. I think I'm going to glue these two together, kind of sandwich them together like this. Um, I'm thinking that they'll, they'll look like a metal track to get on the center here when I embed them into the foam uh, and paint them silver. I think it'll kind of look like a track that the car is actually on. Um, now I was thinking about it too. The, the car is kind of optional if you don't want to put the car in here. This is kind of a small dome, and the car is a little bit big. So if I had a bigger dome, I think this would look a little bit better. So the car is completely optional. I think it would look cool with or without it. Um, I may include it in mine, I may not. You know, just however the display will look the best. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut some slits in here to embed these in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put down some um, lightweight, like a plaster mixed with a glue as the compound base for where the grass and everything is going to be just to kind of stiffen up this foam and also too I think it'll take paint a little bit better. It's the Jurassic Park Command Compound with an electronic computer that says over a hundred commands. Help. We need more firepower! The computer help. helps you control Jurassic Park. Got him! T-Rex! Attach it! Look out, Pat! Fire the net! Got him! Compound secure. Yeah. Jurassic Park electronic talking command compound figures and dinosaurs sold separately. Batteries not included. Okay, so I cut out the slit here. Here's the two zip ties. I'm gonna put a little bit of PVA glue on them, glue them together, kind of sandwich them. Then they are going to go in the center of the foam right here, which will give us the look of the metal track uh, that the car runs on. And this will be painted silver at the very end. Okay, so I mixed up some just regular PVA uh, glue and a little bit of uh, plaster. Um, it's a Woodland Scenic Lightweight Plaster. I'm going to basically coat all the foam parts so that way it, it seals the foam but also will make it paintable.
Okay guys, quick update. So I covered it in PVA glue with a little bit of uh, Woodland Scenic lightweight plaster mixture. Uh, I coated the base in that. And then uh, while it was still wet, I gone ahead and I sprinkled, I had a little bit of um, sand here. Just kind of coated the base here and a little bit of sand. I'm going to paint all this, but at the same time, I wanted to have a little bit of texture uh, so that way it's just, I, I think that every little bit of layering will help with this. Maybe bring it to life a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna give it a coat of paint. And I'm gonna start working on the painting details, installing the torches and the, the grass. So now I'm going to make some little uh, wire uh, bushes for the diorama. Um, I'm going to cut four pieces of wire the same length, twist them at the base, and then take the top wires, separate them, and make branches out of them. Um, I think you can do this on a larger scale, but because this diorama is kind of small, um, I'm not going to be able to get a lot of detail in the branches. But let's just see what we can do. I've never made one before. Um, I don't think it needs to be terribly long, you know, maybe two inches. This is completely up to you as far as how to do this, but um, let's see, I'm just gonna cut maybe four about the same length. They don't have to be exact. Okay, so we did four little trees. I put some PVA glue on it. They're drying. Um, I might need to clean them up a little bit so there's no drips in it. Um, but that way they're kind of coated and I can actually throw some paint on it. If I was thinking about it, I could have just mixed my paint in with the PVA glue just to give them a base coat and paint them at the same time. But I didn't think that far ahead. Okay, I want to focus my efforts on the bushes now a little bit. I've got my wire bushes that we painted, uh, that we made out of wire. Um, I put a little bit of glue on them here, and I'm just going to dip it into my my uh, fake brush or bush. See if we can just coat this whole thing and see how we can get it to look. It looks okay. I think we need some more green on it though. Let's see if I can do this while holding the phone. Looking a little bit better, but it's definitely looking like a small bush. 
Let's just kind of get it in perspective here. Yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Definitely looks kind of cool. It looks like a tree. Hmm, I'm impressed. I like it so far. So my glue gun actually dripped on the counter when I was working on this and uh, it looks like a cool little flame. So I'm actually going to cut the top off of this and this is what I'm going to use for the torches on the gates. I just need to make seven more of them. Seven more mistakes. Okay, so we're done. It took a little longer than I thought. Um, there was a lot that I didn't take into consideration when planning this build out. Um, there's a couple things that I think I would do differently going forward, but I'm learning. And I think that that's, that's what I'm going to take away from this, is that this was my first time ever building a small diorama like this. The scale was very small um, compared to the things I usually like to build. Um, but I'm very intrigued by it, and I definitely want to do it again. I'm going to be building several different projects. Um, I combined, you know, styrofoam, glue, paint, uh, dirt, um, solder. I did a little bit of electrical work on getting the LEDs to light up right. Um, 3D printing. So there was a lot of elements in this thing for it being so small. Uh, that being said, um, I know there's a lot of imperfections in it, but that's okay because I'm learning. And, uh, you know, as long as I can take something away from this and I can show you guys a few things um, and, and you guys can show me a few things, then I think that, you know, I'll just continue to get better. So I really enjoyed this build. It was fun. And overall, I think it came out pretty cool. I think it's going to be a cool little shelf piece. And uh, I'm going to continue to build more stuff. And uh, let's get to the reveal.